I don't know, 10th, uh, Shropshire lad, along on a Friday afternoon. It's gonna be pizzas today. I think there's quite a few people that are quite keen to do this, so I'm excited um, to get started. I've got my setup here. Uh, I'm just gonna move over. Hopefully you can all see me. It's quite hard to squeeze everything in. I'm gonna have to bend down again. It's really difficult to get everything in. Right, hold on. Let's just move this camera up a little bit. And hopefully you'll be able to see everything from there. Right, good. So. I've got my wood fire pizza oven here, the uni, uh, rocking away. You can see the smoke probably pouring out the top there. That's uh, ready to go, nice and hot. I've got all my toppings ready. Uh, hopefully you guys know what you're doing topping wise. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make the dough from scratch uh, using a quite a simple recipe. Um, and then I've got some dough that's already risen. So you guys may need to wait a little bit longer uh, than what you know I, I need to for your dough to rise but I don't want you to sit around waiting for dough to rise while I'm live. So obviously I've made some earlier, Blue Peter style. Um, so I'll get that going. And I'm gonna do three different pizzas for you today. Obviously I said, you know, it's up to you guys what toppings you put onto your pizza, but uh, ultimately I'd like to try and inspire you to think a little bit differently. I mean, there's nothing too crazy that I'm gonna do, but it's not your traditional pizzas necessarily. Uh, it's always good to play around, especially when you're making your own, because it's cheap, you know, if you want, you might sip a strange pizza on a menu. Uh, once I saw banana and chocolate pizza uh, and I didn't really fancy buying it, uh, so I thought I'd make it. And then when I made it, it was horrible, so I'm glad I didn't spend the money on it because it only cost me a couple of quid to make it at home. So you might want to play around and do some crazy stuff anyway. Maybe make some dessert pizzas or, I don't know, whatever you fancy. Um, we've got about a minute before we kick off, so I'm gonna jump behind the, the, uh, the stage. The stage, my, my, this is my stage in my garden and we will get started uh, in about a minute's time. I'm just going to uh, reload this um, pizza oven with some, it's basically a pellet fed hopper on the back, just put wood pellets into it and it just burns through and you'll probably sit down, I don't know if you know how easily you can see, you can't see a lot going on there, but there's, uh, maybe I'll pick up the camera in a little bit and actually show you what's going on in there while it's cooking um, but that's nice and hot which is great so first things first I think we get started I'm off shot aren't I you're gonna have to just bear with me on this um, if you can't see me my face that's fine you really just need to be watching what I'm doing down here so we've got 600 grams of flour here now there's a couple of guys from the youth center who are doing this who gave you 600 grams each if you have that it's weighed out for you, so you don't need to worry about weighing it, but you do need to take uh, maybe like that much, a handful, out of the bowl before you start, because you're gonna need that to help you uh, rolling it out, yeah? So don't, if you're one of my youth club crew, take a little bit of that out. It won't matter that you've got a bit less, don't worry about that. Just save some, some to one side, Zoe, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and uh, you're gonna need that in a little bit, all right? Okay, so. Everyone else, 600 grams of flour. Now you need to make a well, in fact, I'm gonna come up to the front here and show you. Just get your, your bowl. Maybe the sunlight's not very good. But basically just gonna make a hole in the middle of your flour there to drop your yeast and stuff into. So, hole in the middle of the flour. I'm gonna go with some yeast into the middle. So one, sa one sachet of fast action yeast. Is my uh, camera now going on a wonk? It is a bit, isn't it? Technical difficulties. Believe it or not, you're actually sellotaped to a pole here. Maybe that's a bit better. My bad. Right, hopefully that's a bit better. Right, good. Okay, so fast action, action yeast goes in. Teaspoon of sugar. That's just going to accelerate the speed in which the, uh, the yeast activates. A uh, pinch of salt in there, okay, and then we're just going to, now I've said 300 mils of water, that is a guideline, okay, so what I want you to do is fill the hole that you've made with water first of all, okay, stop, you can always add more water but you can't take it out again, all right, then you're just going to take your hand and just start to work through, so I'm going to bring this up here, so slowly work the flour, can't really see it, can you, what's going on there? Work the flour around like that, 
So you just gently pull in more flour in each time. Don't mix it all together straight away. And then you can add a bit more flour as and when you go until we get to a consistency that we're able to knead out on the board. So I'm going to keep going around with that. That's coming together quite nicely. But it's going to need a bit of extra. There's a bit more there. If you need a bit more than 300, uh, 300 mil, then don't worry about it. Make sure it's warm because that will help to activate the yeast as well. Okay, just going to keep working all that together until kind of binds enough for us to pull it out onto the board and I'm going to give it a little knead. Tiny bit more water, I think that's going to be me done. So make sure you work all the edges, okay. You don't want it to be too wet, but you don't want it to be too dry either. It needs to be sort of like just soft. Sticking to your hands isn't a bad thing, okay. Try and work it off a little bit. Okay, get that bit of flour out of the bowl. Then take an extra bit of flour, so that bowl is going to be going to one side, put it there so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so it's a rough sort of shaggy looking loaf, or a piece, a piece of dough, sorry. Bit of flour on the board. Okay, and then we're just going to start to work that. So I'm using the palm of my hand to push the dough into the board. Okay, and generally I say have some flour on the board. But don't work your dough into the flour unless it's starting to stick either to the board or to your hands. So that's starting to get sticky, so I'm going to bring a bit more flour in and go again. Okay, so you're only using it if you need to, otherwise you're going to end up drying out the dough too much and it's not going to be very nice. It'll be dry. You won't get the lovely bubble ups that you want when you do a pizza. Okay, so you're kind of tr trying to almost find art and you need to play around with it. Just going to get some of that extra oh, hands. I suggest you do the same. Makes it a bit easier. From when you first started mixing, you'll probably have uh, flour. I'm just going to keep working that. And, you know, I suggest keep working for about five minutes or more until it's really sort of stretchy and elastic y and you can feel that there's a change. Because what you need to do is to stretch all those fibres in the, uh, the gluten, in the flour. Um, to make a really good dough. So keep working, work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. Right, that's going to be enough for me. You guys carry on because I've got some ready made. But once it's done, you know, uh, a dough that will be more than one thing, so these will become baguettes for tomorrow. Uh, but coat it with a tiny bit of oil, drop it into your bowl, take some cling film. Or if you don't have cling film, you can put a plate over it, you can put a tea towel over it, but just cover it up so the air can't get to it. Yeah, and then just somewhere sort of room temperature or somewhere slightly warmer. Um, you'll see within half an hour, 40 minutes, it will have doubled in size and become like this. This is the one I rose earlier. Okay, you can see that, it's filling the bowl. And what I want you to do then, I'm going to do this up close so you can see what's happening. Just knock it back. So you see all that, all those air bubbles there? Knock it right back and take all that air out of it. Okay, so it goes back to the original size again. All right. So that's the easy bit. And then I'm going to give that a second knead on the board. You're probably going to get four or five pizzas out of this much dough, to be honest with you. It's quite a lot there. But I imagine you all, you'll all want your own. And if there's a family of four, then you're going to have plenty of pizza dough here. So, just pop that. That's Just knock the air out of that. I'm just going to pop that to one side. Okay, next. Super quick pizza sauce. Okay, so, so I'm just going to take my Nutribullet. Now, if you've got Passata, you won't need to do this. You can just mix it by hand. If you've got chopped tomatoes like I'm using, you might want to blend it, so hopefully you've got a blender. Um, tomatoes go into the Nutribullet, along with some balsamic vinegar. Drop a that, about 50 ml balsamic vinegar. I'm going to go with some fresh oregano in there, or you can use dry, dry is just as good, and then salt and pepper. 
and also a little bit of sugar, about a teaspoon of sugar. All right, and then I've forgotten my blade, so I'm going to grab the blade from the house, and then you're literally just going to whiz it up in a blender. Okay, got my blade. I always forget something every single time because my head in, but there we go. Right, so I'm just literally just going to. Rise that up, and you've got the perfect pizza sauce. Super easy. Took me what, 35 seconds to make that, and that'll be absolutely delicious. Give it a taste. Bang on, that is. Don't need anything more complicated than that. Right, let's make some pizza then. So, a bit more flour on your board. You probably want, I mean, depends how big a pizza you could, if you're at home using the oven. You could make a massive one in a big tray if you wanted to. So it really just depends on what people want to do. I'm going to make one that needs to fit into this, so it can't be massive. So I'm probably going to break this into four. Um, now we've got one of the youth club, Zoe, watching on, um, as a message to say that she doesn't have a rolling pin. Okay, So I'm just going to show you. In fact, I'm going to actually move the camera now so that you over what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing. Just bear with me a second. I'm going to move this in a bit, a bit closer, my makeshift, oops, ah, box, alright, now, hopefully, you can see what I'm doing there, and you don't need to see my face, look at you Zoe, you haven't got to look at me, right, okay, so, if you've not got a um, rolling pin, that's absolutely fine, okay, you want to sort of take, get yourself a sort of, disc shape like that okay if you can see okay and then you can just start to just pull it just and it should if you've kneaded it enough it will stretch like you've seen the pizza guys on TV in Italy who you know they uh, they're throwing these around and stuff and they're super stretchy but you just put it down and just keep working it with your fingers work it out work it out and you can just keep stretching it and you should Take a little bit longer than with a with a um, rolling pin, but you should be able to just stretch it out to the point where it's nice and thin. So, and you'll have a good crust at the edges then as well. So I'm going to work that one right to the edges with my fingers. No rolling pin required. And then as I go around, just pinch and roll, pinch, pinch the edges, and you're just getting that th that crust thinner and thinner and thinner every single time. Okay, you want your pizza to be nice and thin. Okay, that's looking good. I'm happy with that. So that's one without a rolling pin. Okay, just try and, and once it's back on the board, you can work it back into a sort of circular shape. Okay, the next two I'm going to roll with a rolling pin just because it's quicker for me. And if you've got one and that's what you want to do, or you want to see how I do it, then we'll do the rolling pin one. So, but that's how you make a hand spread one, like so. Okay, a bit more flour on the board. Again, same starting point. So you're just gonna roll it out or get it into a circular shape. If you start with a circle, you've got more chance of ending with a circle. And then just go backwards and forwards a few times, turn it. Always make sure you keep moving it because it might maybe stick into the board. You might need more flour. As you'll notice, as it's not sticking, I'm not adding any more flour at this point. Okay, so just working that one out to the edges. And again, and I still like to, when I get it to this point, do exactly what I did with the, the other one, and that is pick it up and kind of give it just a little bit of a twist, a twist and twist and twist, like this, just so that you've got a little bit of a crust. It's a bit thicker at the edge. So we're going to do one more, pull that one up here. Okay, maybe a tiny bit more dough in that one, I think. Right, so I'm rolling it out, a little more flour. I'm going to get some flour underneath these as well, because otherwise they are going to be harder to get off the board when I need to get them off. So then you need to make sure you put some flour under them when you do that as well. All right, so get the 
Good one, rolled out. Keep turning it round, spin it over. Make sure it's not sticking. Roll it all out. Keep going. Yep, yeah, that's looking good. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the last one. So, pick it up, bit of a pinch all the way around. Make sure you've got a nice crust on the outside. Hopefully you can still see this. I'm going to change the camera angle again now. Because I don't think you need to be watching me spreading stuff onto these. So, that's going to... Let's go back again to what we were. See my ugly mug again. Right. That. Hopefully you can still see what's going on. There we go. Got a really dodgy setup here. I've literally sellotaped like a broom pole to uh, <laughs> to a pole, and then it's in like a some sort of polystyrene box. I don't have a proper tripod. Right. Anyway. So, can you, oh, you probably can't see much what's going on there because of the light, but anyway, you should be able to see that. We've got these three pizzas here. Now, I'm just going to roll the hand, hand, roll out the hand rolled ones slightly, just so that they're all, they all look a bit more similar. Uh, it needs another stretch. Sometimes you'll find that they bounce back, and you just need to give them a second stretch out. You want it a decent size. So, just stretch that one out again. Lovely, they look great. Right. Back off. Just gonna use a spoon and then the back of the spoon, just work the sauce to within sort of a centimetre of the edges. Don't go over the edges, especially if you're putting it in the oven on a tray because you'll find that it'll stick. Okay, so can you even see what's going on there? Slightly, I think the, the light out here is not very good today, unfortunately. Apologies for that, but I can't light this thing in my house. I'm going to just load the stuff up with some more pellets. Should be nice and hot now. Okay. Just going to spread that one again. A bit more. So it's like kind of a bit more sauce. Don't go crazy with the sauce. There's no need. So I'm going to put tomato sauce on two of these, and then we're going to do an alternative on the different one. There's tomato on this one as well. Which is great. And then the third one, what I'm going to do is put some um, sardines. Anyone like tin sardines? I absolutely love them. A lot of you probably don't. Some people will. But if you just mash up some sardines, they're in tomato sauce already. So just slightly mash them with a fork. Okay, the camera's on the wonk again, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I definitely need to invest in a proper tripod. This is ridiculous. Okay. There you go. At least you can see the pizzas now. That's good. Right. Okay, so third one is some sardines. I'm just going to pour those out onto the pizza and just work the sardines and the sauce. And that becomes your base. So you don't need any tomato, extra tomatoes because it's already in tomato sauce. I love putting sardines on pizzas. It's such an amazing, uh, amazing flavour. So now we've got the bases down. I realised the second thing I forgot was my grater. So I'm just going to go and run into the house and grab a grater. Two seconds. You'll also hear my daughter moaning in the background. I think she probably wants a pizza. Although she's only five months, she's smashing everything we give her at the moment. Five months? Eight months, sorry. My bad. Right. Okay, so we've got the um, sardine base and then two tomato bases. I'm going to go with, on the sardine base, for, first of all, we're going to go with the cheese on the bottom. So this is just a bit of cheddar all over the top of that. And all I'm going to put onto this is some fresh green peppercorns. 
So if you wanted to make like a peppercorn sauce with um, for like a, a steak, you know, you can get these. So they're fresh, they're really fiery, they're great. So I'm just gonna, f like basically they're just like a vine. If you look on my Instagram stories, you'll see a close-up picture of these. But I'm just gonna run green peppercorns all over the sardines. And then just gonna add some red onion. Little bits of red, red onion there. And a little bit of yellow pepper. And we'll finish that with some fresh baby rocket, which has just popped up in the garden for the first time. And finish it with a little bit of rapeseed oil as well. Finish them all with a bit of rapeseed oil. I always use rapeseed oil rather than olive oil just because it's local, no air miles, um, tasty. It's got a higher smoking point than omega-3, sorry, oh, sorry, a higher omega-3, higher smoking point than olive oil. Straighten out my uh, thing again. Right, so that's one pizza almost done. Let's get a little bit more of that on there. Great. Right, second one is going to be a, oh, we're going to put some mozzarella on there as well. Rip up some mozzarella, just a few blobs around. Okay, just nice big blobs of mozzarella there, they'll melt lovely. Okay, second one is going to be a base of cheese again, a bit of cheddar. And then we're going to go, get that down, excuse me. You don't need to, you'll notice I'm not putting too much cheese on these. Just a little bit of cheese, is less is more. We're on the wonk again, aren't we? I think that'd be fine. Okay, and then we're going to go for some chorizo on this one. I'll dash, dash that around. And some mushrooms. Just very simple. That'll do, I think. So three mushrooms, maybe get one more bit of mushroom on there. Squeeze it in. Okay. So we've got, that's just the treats of mushroom and then we're gonna put plenty of mozzarella on that one. Just dash it all over. Oops. Like that. Okay, and then finally, this last one, again, base of cheese on the bottom, this cheddar, get that down. Now the asparagus is a new season now, it's just coming through, so British asparagus is bang in season, bang on point, one of the most, most favourite vegetables, brilliant on a pizza, excuse me, that cheese. So just going to lay some asparagus spears over this one. And also, we're going to go with some beetroot. So this is just raw beetroot. Just skinned it, drop that in there. As it's National Vegetarian Week, I thought we'd need to get some veggie ones in. Okay, so we've got pizza and beetroot there. And then I'm going to finish that with a crumble of feta. He actually stole this idea after watching Rob from Roots of Wing Chef on his TV show, Reappearance, uh, this week. And he suggested this would be something that he was going to cook in his restaurant if he had it. Uh, and I thought, that sounds good. I'm nicking that. So thanks, Rob. And he nicked a few of my ideas in the past. So hit one back. Another drizzle dr oil. Dr oil on this one. And then we're on to cooking them in this amazing uni oven. So... What I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to take you down from here and I'm going to flip the camera around and you'll be able to see what's going on Oops. as we go. So, right, so here's the pizzas. Okay, and then this oven, you'll be able to see that it is, it is hot. There's a glowing hot at the back. And I expect these pizzas to take somewhere between sort of like 
maybe 60 and 75 seconds to cook. So I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Be fun. Got that one, first one on, nearly. Oh, this is hard to do it with you guys watching on here, but it's gonna be better than watching from up there. All right, so pizza on the paddle. I'm gonna fire her in. Okay, so that is in the oven, as you can see. Right now, to make this hotter, it's better that we put this on. So just gonna give that what we are now. So we've got like, from the 20, 20 second mark. What the fuck? Oh, so you heard me swear there. This is connection issue is doing my head in. So we've got, coming round, it's about 50 seconds now. We'll see what's going on in here. That pizza's cooking pretty well to me. I'm gonna fire it out, turn it around. Whoops. <laughs> Can't even, I'm gonna have to do it by hand. Okay, so you can see that one side is done. Back on. Hope this isn't too dizzy for you to watch. Okay, a few more seconds, and the first piece is gonna be coming out. It's really that quick. Don't think there's much longer left. I think that's one, that one's done. I don't know whether I'm gonna be better off to put, this, put you back up here for this, because now you've seen it, you've seen me do that three times in a row, so I'm gonna spin that back around so I can actually cook these properly. Pop this up here. And hopefully you can see what's going on still. That piece is going to be burning, so I'm going to get it out. Boom. One, pizza done. Second one about to go in. This is the sardine one. Okay, so I'm going to drop that in. Front on. Okay. Got enough pellets in the back there. I'm just going to put a few more pellets in it. Just keep it going. The last couple. Exciting stuff. That was like under two minutes that pizza was cooked in. I'm going to finish that one. A little bit of this. Uh, Rocket as well, baby rocket. Okay, better check this one out. It's a little bit longer before I spin it. Okay, these pizza ovens are seriously, seriously good, man. Like, I think it's about 200 quid, uh, but like, it's amazing. Like honestly, you ain't gonna get pizza like that at your oven at home. It's just not gonna happen. And certainly not as fast. Right. Have a look at this one. Yeah, we're getting some blisters. It's good. Get it back in. Seems to have slowed down a little bit. That's okay. Door on. Just wait for this second one to be done. And then we've got this final one to go, and then we're done. That quick. It's crazy, really. What time are we on? 30 minutes, not too bad. Considering we uh, made the sauce, you know, there's one pizza's cooked fairly quick, you know. I think if you're cooking these in your oven at home, you're probably looking at like 15, 20 minutes for one of these to cook, maybe 10. You want to get it on the highest possible heat you can. Get it screaming, screaming hot. Uh, just remember to put some flour down on your board and don't let that sauce go over the edges, otherwise you're going to have pizza sticking all over the shop. Right, let's look at this one. That's looking pretty good. Go for another spin and back in for the last bit. Cooks pretty fast though. I love this thing man, it's so exciting. I definitely would recommend you get yourself a little outdoor pizza oven like this. You take it to the beach and I'm not even on commission. These guys, they should have sent me one of these really. I wish they had, but no, this is a Christmas present and it's absolutely brilliant. So, 
by neck hitch is done. Number two, sorted. And then we go for the final one, which is the beetroot, um, asparagus, and feta, which is a healthy one. Well, it's probably not healthy, the amount of feta I've put on there, but don't worry. That's going to go in. And then we'll be done. So I'm going to get this board up here, just because there's flour all over this one. I'm going to get a fresh board on. Shouldn't really be picking them up like that, should I? Forget where I am. Okay. Put that on there. I'm going to get some more of this, uh, this rocket on here. It's a thing that they do a lot in Italy is to dress the pizza with fresh herbs after you want to put basil on it or whatever you can do that if you put it on before you cook it then it obviously gets kind of like nailed by the by the oven so a nice nice fresh finish is to put some herbs on afterwards Give that needed to be pushed down. That should be flying now. Hopefully. Nearly there. I'll have a quick look at this. The first spin. Looking good. Back in. So obviously if you're cooking in a domestic oven you're not going to need to keep spinning them around like I am. It's because all of the heat from this is at the back of the oven. Okay. So that's why I'm having to do that. But you should just, in a normal domestic oven, it should be just nice and even. believe it and it's pizza for tea or you can have it tomorrow cold for breakfast because cold pizza is the absolute nuts I love it I'm starting trying to sort out this dodgy uh, stand again I need some new sellotape I think on it sellotape right a little bit longer nearly there though very very nearly there I think the oven slowed down ever so slightly, I don't know why. Not many pellets left in it. I don't want to put any more in because I don't want to waste them because it's the last pizza I'm making. Right. There we go. Maybe a tiny bit longer. Tiny, tiny bit longer. Just because the oven's slowing down in heat slightly now. We're getting there. I don't know why you're facing down so much. There we go. It's because the we're on the wonk. We're on the wonk. Right. That, my friends, is done. Whoops. Get a minute. Awesome. There we are. Pizzas done. I'm going to take this down so you can have a good look at what we've made. Whoops, let's flip this around. Flip it around. All right, so there's the uh, asparagus one. That's the chorizo and mushroom. And this one is the green pepper, yellow peppers, red onion, and sardines. There we go. Right, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to smash these. I'm Shropshire Lad. Please like, subscribe, follow, all that jazz. And I'll see you back on Tuesday with, I haven't decided what yet, but I'll take a photo of these, post up what we're going to be making next time as per usual. Cheers, guys. Much love. Have a good weekend.